Jones been speaking to Sport Bible. He said that AJ's dead to him now. Is the, the fight dead and done, do you feel? Apparently, if he said that. I mean, I don't know. You know, When we were negotiating that fight, AJ had three weeks to sign the fight. They've been negotiating the Usyk fight for three months. Um, when we were trying to do the fight on December 18th, we were told we can't do it on December 18th. It has to be November 26th or December 3rd because Usyk is fighting eight, uh, Fury in February. Well, we're now in February. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you can only do so much. We would make that fight now. It's a much bigger fight financially for Tyson Fury, but undisputed, the undisputed fight is also obviously very important. And if they can make that, good luck to them. If not, we'd be ready to take that fight after Jermaine Franklin. There was an interview on TalkSport between Simon Jordan and uh, Robert Smith. Um, a lot covered in that interview. One of the main points being that the conduct of the parties involved in the kind of Ben case left a lot to be desired. I just wanted your, your kind of response to yeah, that. What, what about the conduct of the British Boxing Board of Control? Mm -hmm. I mean, basically, TalkSport and the British Boxing Board of Control are getting together to try and find a way where no one asked them a question about the way they acted in this. The British Boxing Board of Control had the results for exactly the same amount of time that we had. Now, Robert will hide behind, oh, we had to look into it, we had to have lawyers, but ultimately, we had to wait on the decision of the British Boxing Board of Control. And they made a decision three days before the fight. Contractually, if the British Boxing Board of Control sanctioned that fight, the fight has to take place if both fighters want to progress with that fight. They didn't make a decision for five or six weeks. They also didn't tell the other fighter. And they'll, they'll say, are we waiting on this, waiting on this? The reality is you knew for as long as us. No one asked them these questions. So they should tread carefully, really, because you know I believe things will come out during this process that might put them in a difficult position. But there's a lot of propaganda. I'm not really willing to get involved with it. Others than say, we're waiting on the WBC. But one thing you have to understand, which no one keeps asking the board about, is they had all the information for exactly the same period of time as us. They are the governing body. They are the ruling body of boxing who make the decisions in terms of whether they will sanction this fight. And for five weeks, they ultimately decided they were going to sanction the fight. Why? Ask them. Interestingly, uh, Robert denied that any, him or anyone else on the board leaked the information to the press there. The finger point, I suppose, maybe goes back and forth between two. Does it really matter though, Eddie, who, who leaked the, the, that information? Not really. I mean, but what, again, people don't keep commenting on is people say that the fight got cancelled once the story got leaked. The fight was cancelled, ultimately not sanctioned, at about eight o'clock in the morning on Wednesday. The story came out at 11 o'clock when someone told the newspapers that they weren't going to sanction the fight. And then two hours after that, they sent out an official statement to the public. I don't really care who leaked the story. I couldn't give a shit. What I want to know is why did the board take five or six weeks to make a decision that cost us seven figures, that cost us you know, a lot of questions and, and some people question our integrity, when they knew about the test exactly the same amount of time as us. And they are the people that can cancel the fight and not sanction it. They decided to do it three days before the fight. Eddie, Robert Smith said that he was going to pull the fight anyway, even though the day before, nice. but he said they was going to pull that before that information got leaked. Do you think that is going to be the case? They did pull the fight before the information got leaked. Again, this is what you, you lot, but it's like, it baffles me. The fight got pulled. When we say pulled, they wrote to us to say this fight will not be sanctioned. That was at about 8 o'clock in the morning on Wednesday. About two hours later, the Daily Mail ran their story. So it wasn't, it's nothing to do with the story. But it was very nice of them to decide not to sanction the fight after waiting five weeks and letting us spend a million pounds in costs. I wish they would have not sanctioned the fight when they knew about the test results, but they chose not to. But no one wants to answer them. Do you think Simon Jordan was fair in the questions yeah. that he asked Robert Smith? Oh, very fair, yeah. yeah. I, could imagine. I haven't even listened to it, but I would. Um, I mean, I think you've just answered your own question. Eddie, speaking about what could be next, there's been a lot of criticism around the potential Pacquiao fight for Conor Ben. What have you made of that? Massive fight. Whole world will watch. Absolute barnstorm. Well, the criticism itself of seeing Connor in with Manny Pacquiao, people. Oh, is he that good? I don't know. What? Connor. No, more what? so because Manny Pacquiao has been retired for two years. Oh, that, but what are you saying? Answer. Connor Ben is this unbelievable. I mean, people were talking about Crawford against Pacquiao, right? Like six months ago. So Connor Ben is all of a sudden this unbelievable pound for pound fighter, not really, you know, according to the same people that criticise him, Conor Ben's never beaten anyone. Conor Ben lost to Cedric Paynard at your call a couple of years ago, but apparently he's on another level to, to Manny Pacquiao. Either way, don't, look, I'm telling you now, I'm, that fight, by the way, that fight's not even close. There's been conversations with Roti. If that fight gets made, that's massive, massive. I'm not even sure it will.
but there has been discussions. I um, spoke to Bob Arum yesterday and obviously mentioned the Fury Joshua stuff. He's adamant that it will be Fury Usyk next and he's completely dismissed any chance of Fury Joshua taking place. That's fine. I, I think for boxing, I hope the undisputed fight gets made. All I said was, if it doesn't, we would be willing to make the AJ fight now. And it's a much bigger fight for Tyson Fury than the Usyk fight financially and I think for British boxing. Just one more from me. Uh, Lee Wood, is there a, re a, a rematch clause yes. in place? Yes, there is. Yeah. It's a voluntary defence. Eddie, you were over in Dublin there recently. Yeah. Uh, how was teams with Conor Mack first of Absolutely all? Absolutely mental. Yeah, it was mental. It was, uh, you know, I was in awe of him. I don't mind saying it. He's a massive star. He's a, he's a great personality, great energy, great business mind as well. Obviously a big supporter of Katie Taylor. Wants to help Katie Taylor as well at the same time. Um, and we'll see what happens. I think the May fight will be in the three arena. We're working towards a Croke Park fight in September and we'll see what happens. I remember speaking to you in Liverpool a couple of years ago. Did you ever look at Cork as an alternative? Look, Collins, Eubank, yeah. Perky, Quig, was that I, ever uh, a mention? My dad promoted the fight at Mill Street. I was there. Yeah. I think I was 15. I remember sitting there, blowing air into it. It was like, you know, the mist everywhere. It was a wild night. Unfortunately, Eubank lost that night. But yeah, um, yeah we looked at, at Cork, but also there's a problem with the seating. You know, there's a lot of standing in, in the arena that we looked at in Cork and it's again additional cost of bringing in additional seating so I just think this time around it's more a timing issue where we just want to, don't want to miss out on the opportunity to bring Katie Taylor to Ireland so three arena most likely and I'll go on with look Gary Cuddy comes through this yeah. weekend he's going to call me and event that uh, absolutely that yeah big fight you know we, we talked about Maxi Hughes we like the Angel Fierro fight I like Jorge Linares this is a big fight for Gary on Saturday but if he comes through he'll be in a big fight on May the 20th thank you Eddie please uh, Eddie, the strike fee for AJ Usyk was 65 million, was it? Uh, allegedly according to the Sun newspaper. What do, you think, what, do you, anyway. what do you think the fee should be for uh, Fury Usyk? I mean, the, I think uh, I, did, did they someone report that Tyson Fury wants 100 million for that fight or something like that? I've no idea. I mean, obviously the fight between Fury and Usyk is a bigger fight because of it being undisputed than AJ against uh, Usyk, but. I don't know about the negotiations. I think the bigger problem, which I said earlier in the week, is if I'm Tyson Fury, I want a lot more money than Alexander Usyk because commercially, I'm a lot more valuable in a fight. But sometimes, if you want that fight so badly and you want to be undisputed, you have to basically accept 50-50 because -50 Usyk is a man of principle and he won't take the fight unless it's 50-50. But I have no idea. Like, I'm just literally talking to you like you talk to each other, just as a, as a fan. I don't see the fight happening at Wembley because if Fury did want 100 million, he ain't gonna get nowhere near that fighting at Wembley. I hope it does happen at Wembley, it'd be great. Um, no idea. If the WBC put the winner of Jake Paul and Fury in the uh, top 40, does that discredit the WBC? Yeah, I, I mean, it's a lot different. Obviously, a lot of the questions last night to me were about that, them going in the top 15, which would be a total farce. You know, going in the top 40, not so much of a farce. I mean, there are fighters in there that are 9 and 0, 10 and 0, and how many Tommy Fury had? I mean, he's never beaten anyone, but is he what? Is he 7 0, 8 and 0? I don't know. Look, I think we live in a world where commercially for the WBC it might be uh, fruitful for them in terms of publicity to put someone in a world rankings. Down at number 38, does it really matter? Like, it, it shouldn't be happening, but at the end of the day, I don't want to see fighters going the top 15 who could get a world title shot or, or someone could lose the opportunity of a world title shot because Jake Paul has entered the rankings at number 13. That would be bad for the sport. But number, f you know, when now they're talking about top 40, like, I think it's not irrelevant, but certainly not as much of an issue as that top 15. Thank you. Cheers, boys. Cheers, boys. Cheers, boys.